It's a beautiful day to be barbecue, and I've got three racks of pork ribs in the offset smoker behind me, and I'm gonna show you exactly the difference that time makes when it comes to cooking your ribs. So pour yourself a glass of your favorite beverage. Are uh, you ready? Salute. Oh yeah, boom, 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 boom. I think I found me my one bourbon. I got a tip for you on that in just a minute, but first, back to these ribs. All right, like I said, three racks, pork ribs, all trimmed to St. Louis style. Each rack right at about 2.8 pounds. Wanted to keep them really close to the same weight. Been running an average temperature of about 225, burning splits of oak in the uh, Char Griller Grand Champ XD. It's about one o'clock right now, and the last rack went in at noon. It's gonna cook until four o'clock for four hours. The second rack went in at 11 a.m. That one's gonna cook for five hours. It's also gonna be done at four o'clock. And the first rack went in at 10 a.m. That one's gonna cook for a total of six hours. They're all gonna be done at four o'clock. We're keeping this cook real simple. We're not spritzing, we're not wrapping. All I did to prep was remove the membrane and I applied the rub and I'm uh, trying something new. I usually like making my own rubs, but I found a couple that I was, uh, look pretty interesting. So if they work out well, I'll let you know what they were. And, um, into the offset smoker they went. That lid hasn't opened since the last rack was put in and it's gonna stay closed until they're all done at four o'clock. Now I wanna tell you about this bourbon real quick and I gotta make sure you understand I am not getting paid to talk about this. This bourbon was introduced to me by a good friend. It is the John Lee Hooker Legacy Boogie Chillin' Bourbon. And I gotta say it is excellent. It is perfect for chilling next to the smoker, chilling in your yard, just relaxing while you're Ribs are cooking, enjoying your day. It is smooth. It is absolutely worthy of the legendary John Lee Hooker. And um, I highly recommend you give it a try. I'll make sure and leave a link in the comments of this video so you will know where to find it. It's new, just came out recently, released by the family. And they are definitely, they definitely did John Lee Hooker right. Cheers. Oh, that's smooth. Now, last time I did a cook just like this, people were freaking out because I didn't show you what the final cooking temperature was of each rack of ribs when they were done. So this time I'm gonna use my trusty little Thermapro Instant Read and I'm gonna poke each rack uh, in several different places so we can see exactly what the temperature comes out to after four hours, after five hours, and after six hours. So, uh, and then we're gonna see which one I like best, of course, when it comes to cooking ribs. You gotta go with what you like the most. This is just some good information for you. This is not the one and only way to cook ribs. You cook ribs the way you wanna cook them and the way you like them. And uh, I'm just here to show you what happens in this particular situation. So you've got some more information to work with next time you cook some ribs. So I hope you find this uh, video very helpful to you. And and uh, when we're all done here, if you like what you saw, please uh, go ahead and uh, you know hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment for you. Matter of fact, I got a favor to ask you, okay? I would love to know where y'all from because uh, I get a lot of uh, comments from uh, all over the world and uh, I've got over 23,000 subscribers now and I appreciate each and every one of you very, very much. And I'm trying to keep up with all the comments and questions and I work real hard at that. So uh, I appreciate your patience, but please pop into the comment section right now let me know where you're watching from. That'd be really interesting to me and help me in developing future videos for you. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this. Let's do this. Welcome to Tone Tone Barbecue. All right, here's how we're set up to cook today. We're working with the Char Griller Grand Champ XD offset smoker. I've got splits of oak wood burning in the firebox. I started off with a little bit of lump charcoal just to get it going, but nothing else besides oak wood is going into this fire box from now on and inside here we're all set ready to go i installed three temperature probes one two three the ribs are going to go here 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 i put those probes there so you can also see the temperature difference all right let's talk about temperatures for just a minute because i know that's the one thing everybody really tends to freak out about so this thing has three temperature gauges on it it came with one but i added a couple more and tell you what honestly those things are they're practically useless. They, they, they serve a purpose, but they're not going to give you a good accurate reading of what the temperature is right where you're cooking your food. For example, this one over here might say 250, this one over here might say 200, and this one up here might say 235. Yeah, and sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it, but generally this one's higher because it's really close to where the fire's coming from. And this one's usually a little higher because the heat rises as it comes through. And this one's usually a little lower 
because well, it's the furthest from the firebox. But you, also, what's in here is going to affect how all this heat and smoke flows around through here. So what I like to use is I like to use a wireless or semi-wireless thermometer. This is my favorite one. This is the Thermo Pro model TP25. It has the ability to have up to four probes on it. The probes are wired to this device, and then this device sends a signal to my cell phone or my tablet. And as you saw earlier, I have all three probes placed on the grate. None of them are in the meat. I'm gonna get in that to a second because that's a big deal to a lot of people. But I just wanna know what the temperature is right where the meat is sitting. So, so far I only have one rack of ribs in there and you can see the temperature at that probe is showing 220 degrees. The next probe, probe number, number three on this, is uh, just over here and the third probe is over here and you can see there's a difference in temperature reading. Now 221 to 241 might seem a little extreme. These two are a little closer. Part of the reason this temperature is a little bit lower is because that probe is so close to the meat. So that's also throwing it off a little bit. See what I mean? What you have in there is going to affect but I don't worry about that too much. I'm looking for a general range. I want to try to run a temperature of around 225 degrees, uh, but it's gonna go higher, it's gonna go lower, and that's totally okay as long as we're in that general range. I don't care if it goes 20, 25 degrees too high, 20, 25 degrees too low. It's going to go up and down, especially when you're running a stick burner like this, because the, as the fuel burns down, the temperature is gonna to start to fall. When you put a new piece in, the temperature is gonna spike up again. So that's why I really like using a device like the Thermo Pro TP25, because I can get a good accurate reading of what the temperature is right at meat level, right at grate level. And it's very handy, it's very easy to use. And I like that it gets an accurate temperature here and it will send it to my cell phone. I have it actually being sent to my tablet because I just like the bigger screen. I can just leave this on because it's got an awesome battery and you can program it. So if you go into your settings here, and you can select what you want. You can also s just create your own profile if you want, but I'm gonna have this set to, I have it set on ambient temperature right now. So you can go over here and click this. You can set it to when you want an alarm to go off. So it'll alert you on your cell phone. It'll start making a bunch of noise and uh, tell you, hey, you're too high or you're too low. So that's a really handy feature to have. You save that, hit okay, and now, It'll tell you when the temperature is high and it'll tell you when the temperature is too low. And it even has a cool little graph feature so you can see what the temperature has been doing as you've been cooking. And it's just super easy to use. It's got a really long range, about 500 feet. So you can take it inside your house. If you're doing a long cook, I could be watching the game and uh, not have to be out here wondering what the temperature is. I can just glance over every now and then or not even glance about it, just forget about it. And when it beeps, I'll come out here and check it out. So that's how I'm monitoring the cooking temperature. Now, for those of you that are freaking out over what temperature the ribs are when they're done. Okay. so. Here's my thing on ribs. Usually I never go by the temperature of the ribs. Ribs, I go pretty much by time and I go by time because I've done so many of them that I just kind of know how long it takes. These ribs are 2.7 pounds. They're significantly smaller than the last rack of ribs I did that were about 3.5 pounds. I've got here the Thermo Pro Instant Read thermometer and when these ribs are finished cooking. They're all gonna be done at the same time at four o'clock. I'm gonna take this thing and I'm going to go ahead and poke them and see what temperature each rack is. This is an instant read thermometer, um, super easy to use. You just, there's off, you just open it and it's ready to go. You poke this into the meat and it'll tell you what the temperature is right away. So really fun device, uh, very simple to use. Um, even has a cool little magnet so you can stick it on your table or smoker or whatever and uh, have it ready to go for you. Um, wife uses it in the kitchen all the time. You can check the temperature of your boiling water, your hot oil, whatever. So I like this device a lot. This is model TP19H and um, just a super handy tool. Another nice thing about Thermo Pro products is they're very affordable. If you want to check this out, please, um, I'm actually an affiliate. Go to my uh, the description here. There's going to be a link there for you to click on, and uh, you can check them out for yourself and, and shop Thermo Pro. 
uh, they're just great. I love them a lot. So when these ribs are done cooking, we're going to poke them all and we're going to see what temperature they're at. And um, we're going to see the difference. Each rib, I'm going to describe the flavor, smokiness, texture, how tender they are, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see, I don't know, which one's my favorite. You will have your own favorite, of course. And uh, we'll just go from there. All right. All right. One of the things people wanted to see in my last video was smoke quality. And well, this is pretty typical of what I'm running. Hopefully you can see it. it's a little difficult to see, kind of thin blue. It's how I like to run it nice and clean, just like this, or even a little cleaner is okay. Definitely not white and fluffy. Let me show you the fire that's burning to get that kind of smoke. There we go. Got a little log burning over there. We actually got flames going. Those flames will go away as that log burns down to nothing but little coals that I'll break up. And then I'll take one of those sticks that are over there, getting nice and hot, and I will throw them on top of that. And uh, that's how we run a nice clean fire, just by running splits that are appropriate for the size of that firebox right there. All right, so I told you I was gonna share with you the temperature difference here in the offset smoker. So um, this gauge over here is showing, uh, what, like around 250. Up here we're showing around 230, and over here we're showing around 200. So that's what those gauges here that on the offset smoker are showing. What about the probes that I have set inside here? Now this gate, the, this probe, this is the one that's right here in the middle next to the, uh, the six hour slab ribs that's showing 219 the second one's showing 228 and the third one's showing 235 now, isn't that funny that over here it's showing higher because it's right next to the firebox and over here it's way lower down to 200 but it's kind of reversed here showing 220 229 236 weird but it is what it is point is they're all really close to around that 225 range and the uh, the fact that the air and the smoke is moving through here and kind of swirling around and making its way out through the stack over here and being deflected by the meat and those probes are kind of you know they're kind of pretty close to the meat too that's all going to affect the temperature reading but this is the actual reading really close to the meat anyways take all this information and put it in your database there and this is just how you kind of know what to do i usually just run one probe and that's good enough as long as you're within that area you don't need to stress too much okay that's my point here is as long as you're within the range you're good don't stress about it being super accurate running the a very consistent temperature the, all the time because you're not going to do that in a stick burner especially one like this maybe if you got this on big super heavy three thousand dollar rig that's a giant you know, monster. Yeah, it'll be a little bit more consistent, but your, uh, your normal everyday backyard smoker like this guy right here is pretty normal and you're going to come up with some great barbecue. You're going to see here real soon. All right, it's four o'clock and it has been a perfect day of barbecuing. Let's have a look at these ribs. We are ready to go. Right here, we got six hours, five hours, and four hours. We're going to shut this down because we don't need this anymore. And um, how about we check these temperatures. All right, got the Thermo Pro instant read here. And uh, let's start with the four hour ribs. And we're gonna poke in a few spots and see what temperatures we come up with. We got 164, 165, 166, 167. Let's try over here. 164, 160, 159, 158. Now let's look at the ribs that have been in here for five hours. We got 168, 169, 170. Uh, there we go, 169, 160. So a little hotter towards the backside here. Look, 175, 176. And right, what about the six hour ribs? 167, interesting, here we go, 170, 171, 172, 175, 176, 177, 178. So this is why I don't really like probing ribs because, <laughs> There's a lot of bones and ribs. This is my point. There's a lot of bones and ribs, and it's really hard to get a good, accurate reading. Depending, it all depends on where you stick the stinking probe. Watch this. Look, we got 60, 164 right here, 
Oh, 160. It kind of bounces all over the place. 167, 168, 169. Okay? They're, they're a little all over the place, but they're all pretty close. What I pay attention to when I'm cooking ribs is mostly just how they look. And I like looking for bones that are starting to expose and looking for, you know, juices rising to the surface and, uh, you know, four to six hours anywhere in there is generally fine. I mean, look, this one's been in here for four hours and it looks great. I think, I think we're good. This one's been in here for five hours. It looks great. You know, this one's been in for six hours. It also looks great. They all look really great. You know, also depending on how thick they are, how much fat they have on, and that's going to make a difference. But we're going to open these up. We're going to cut into these. We're going to see what we got. So here we go. Let's do that. All right. Now this is my favorite part because now I get to eat and I'm hungry after smelling these cooking for uh, six hours. Oh man, four hours, five hours, six hours. Let's cut into them and see what we have. I put these toothpicks in here so I would not um, get them mixed up by chance. Let's just um, cut in the middle of each of these and see what we got going on here. There we go. There it is. All right. Get away, Packer. All right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Stay away. Uh, let's pull a few ribs off of each one. Back up. Okay. All right. Beautiful. All right, let's start with the four hour ribs. Go with this one right here. It, um, it looks good. I mean, not, not a lot I can say about that right now. Let's take a test. Mm. 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 Oh my gosh, all I can say right now is that is freaking delicious. It's so good. The smoke flavor is just on point four hours and it has amazing smoke flavor It's freaking delicious and that rub it did not go wrong with that so um I, I need to get a bite of the five hour ribs to see if there's any difference so let's do this right now five hour ribs mm. 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 I'll tell you what, these five hour ribs are amazing. The rub on the five hour ribs is different from the rub on the four and the six. Same company, different flavor. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna share this with you because it's so freaking good. Woo! I love it. All right. Um, again, still, I need to I need to hit the six hour ribs so I can before I can talk about all three of them. So let's try a six hour. Mmm. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Wow. Oh my gosh. Mm. One more one more bite. Mm. Mm hmm Mm. Mm. All right. Now that I've had a taste of each of the ribs, I kind of gotta go through them one more time to see if there's any major differences. Right now, the only major difference I'm tasting is in the five hour ribs because of the different rub that I use. But I would say also that the six hour ribs, um, I think the, the meat kind of pulls off the bone a little bit easier than the four and the five. So let me run through one more time and we'll, we'll get a double check here. Four hours. Mm hmm Okay, five hours. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, six hours. Wow. Mm. Okay, now that you've seen me gnaw on a few bones here from each of the uh, different racks or ribs here, and I apologize for the just, I mean, that's kind of gross. I hate watching people eat, but anyways, had to do it. The six hours are my favorite, okay? And I'll tell you why. The six hour ribs, um, they all had the same level of smoke flavor. They all had that really nice smokiness from the oak. Really good, clean flavor. I loved it. They all are really great. But what I notice over here on the six hour ribs is that the meat comes off the bone a little bit easier. It doesn't fall off. I still got to kind of tear it off. Um, but it comes off the meat, it comes off the bone a little bit easier. Definitely way easier than the four hour ribs. The four hour ribs are just, they're, they're like right there, right on the edge. They're great. They're done. They're delicious. The five hour ribs are really great. I wish I would have put the rub that's on this one over here on this one because that rub is freaking fantastic oh my god they're the rub on both of them are on both rubs are awesome but this one is wow wow glad i used it and uh, but but the six hour ribs they're just seems counterintuitive but they're actually juicier than the five hour ribs and the four hour ribs and i think what that is is just more of the fat is kind of rendering and melting and it's kind of still in there and it just, and you can see when I pulled it apart there, the juice is starting to ooze out of them. Really amazing. And, you know, it might be different on the really thin end here, but that's the thing with ribs and why I don't like going by temperature on ribs. I go by time is because it, it, there's there's so many bones in there. There's some, some areas have really thick pieces of meat, like on one end, the other end is really thin, and they're going to be different every time. And then, you know, with a little bit of fluctuation, the temperature of whatever you're cooking in, it's it's going to be a little different every time. So. I, my target is usually five and a half to six hours. I like to take a peek at it after five hours to see if it looks like I want it to look. And, um, and I usually just end up going to six hours. The six hours has always been a really good mark for me. You do whatever you like to do. Cook your ribs however you like to cook them because you're eating them. I'm not, I'm eating these, you're not. But if you wanted to share these with me, man, I, I wish I could invite everybody over. Hey, buddy, chill, Packer. He's uh, getting antsy over here. So anyways. This has just been some in information for you. Now, about those rubs, because I'm going to share this. I ran into these guys at a, uh, at a barbecue cook-off. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. But uh, this company here, Geo's Rub and Stuff. All right. So first, this is the uh, four-hour and six-hour ribs I use there. Uh, Geo's Rub and Stuff, the Dragon Dust. It's a garlic, hot garlic rub. Not too salty. I'm, I'm pleased with it. Really great flavor. I like this a lot. I'm going to use it again for sure. And this one is, is family friendly. I think the, uh, the, the little, uh, my 15 year old daughter, she's a little bit of a chef herself. Um, I think she's going to like this a lot. Now, the one that I really like though is the uh, Reaper Dust. That's this one right here. Holy cow. Now, the reason why I decided to give this a shot, and, and you know, like I said, I, if you've seen any of my videos, I'm a big proponent of making your own rubs. I like to keep it simple. But I, I get attracted to stuff that's a little harder to get. Well, making a rub out of reaper peppers is not the easiest thing to do unless you have good access to a bunch of dried reaper peppers. Um, so I saw this and I was like, okay, it's spicy. This is really talking my game. Let me give this a shot. Not at all disappointed. I will put a link to this company's um, website in the description of this video if you want to check it out. This They're not paying me to do this. They're not, no, they didn't even know I'm going to be doing this. I didn't know I was going to do this until this morning. Well, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this on these ribs. And I'm glad I did. So, um, well, that's it. All right. Um, I hope that you have found this information helpful to you. And, um, and this explains why I don't probe the ribs and go by temperature on that because honestly if i was waiting for these things to hit 205 or 190 or whatever they'd have been burnt and nasty and i mm, no, these are juicy they're all freaking bomb delicious this is a really simple cook no wrapping no nothing like that no spritzing remember that i didn't even open that lid to spritz it i matter of fact normally i wouldn't open that lid at all but i had to open it twice to put the other two racks in because i staggered them out like that for you uh, normally i would just put them all in 
close the lid, come back six hours later, open it up, maybe check it five, five and a half hours, see how they look, depending on how the, the wood's been burned over here. But normally six hours is a target. These are awesome. I hope that you um, found this helpful. Please let me know in your comments. Um, any, any appreciation you want to send my way, I appreciate that very much. I appreciate you for watching. Thank you for very much for being here. This is Tony Tone BBQ. Smoke on, my friends.